Hi, my name is Lee Brinton, uh, and I am the 3D technical lead here in professional services at Esri. I'm going to talk to you about some easy ways to bring 3D to your data. I, I most often get questions around uh, 3D, and I kind of wanted to cover some of those with you because I feel that a lot of you may have the same questions. First off, can I can my data be used for 3D? What data model should I be using? and what attributes does my data need? Uh, do I need any special software or extensions? Or I think I have too much data to be used in 3D. Or I probably need special training of some sort. Well, I'm gonna clarify a lot of these questions and points uh, throughout this presentation. So first off, I want to cover some points that I want you to take away from this talk. Um, and that is what I refer to as realizing 3D. And first off, 2D can be 3D, and I'll go over what that means. 3D doesn't always need to be heights, um, extrusion and elevation. Those are two common concepts that I see uh, a lot of confusion around. So I'd like to express uh, what each is and how they can complement and how they are separate entities. Um, things that are 3D by nature, and I'll cover what, exactly what that is. Also, more level of detail is not always more. Um, I'm going to use the word, the term LOD, so that's level of detail, and I'm going to talk about what that is and and how you should think about that. Um, when you're working in the web GIS, I want you to keep this phrase in mind: unlimited features, and I'll go over that in in a minute. Um, and then also, 3D web GIS really you don't need special software, um, something that um, all of us can get into. So 2D can be 2 can be 3D. Um, most of our data that we work with in the GIS platform at, uh, within ArcGIS is going to be uh, two-dimensional. Um, doesn't mean that that data cannot be used in a 3D capacity. Um, if you have numeric fields or any kind of attributes that you uh, would like to use, you can do simple extrusions or you can you can stretch. An, uh, a point line or a polygon to represent uh, a certain attribute, a thematic theme, and render that in 3D. Um, you can actually apply attributes from our geo enrichment layers or our geo enrichment uh, capability to your existing 2D data, and then use the the uh, attributes that you've geo enriched uh, to visualize in 3D. That could be something like demographics, housing, jobs, purchasing trends, things like that. Um, so I could have a map or a scene of all of the bus stops in San Francisco, and I could geo-enrich all of my bus stops within a five-minute walking distance for uh, people who own cars. And then I can extrude the points that represent bus stops by the attribute of uh, the amount of people who own cars, the population that own those vehicles. Um, other things that you can do are uh, represent customer feedback. We once had a project where we were mapping uh, happiness scores, um, and that is something that um, you could extrude a um, an attribute. You can extrude a piece of uh, geometry by a uh, by a specific attribute that me measures the satisfaction of a customer. Um, other areas could be in traffic density. So I don't want you to think that 3D, the third dimension, needs to be a real unit height like uh, the height of a building or anything like that it could actually be a thematic uh, attribute that you're using now i kind of threw out the term extrusion and extruded in the last slide and i'd like to explain what extrusion is and what elevation is now extrusion is really the ability to take simple geometry like a polygon or a a uh, polyline or a point and stretch that geometry in uh, a vertical or a, uh, a downward manner. Um, a simple way to think about this is a building footprint. A lot of us work with simple 2D building footprints and you can extrude that by a, a height attribute that you have on that data and you have a simple 3D building. Um, other ways you can represent is property boundaries and you can extrude those or stretch them to look like fences or walls. Um, and also you could map crime events across the country. So if you have points that uh, indicate different measures of crime, you can extrude those and show uh, hotspots of crime across a, an area. 
So extrusion is really just the stretching of a simple piece of 2D geometry to represent it in a 3D space. Um, you can do this by an attribute or a constant value. So if I want all of my points to be extruded or stretched to 10 meters, I could simply enter that in within the ArcGIS Pro ribbon and it will extrude to that height. Um, alternatively, I could point to an attribute and then each record in my feature class would, would be stretched to the value that is in the attribute that I've pointed to. Now elevation is related, but elevation is the height on ground uh, or is, is usually based on some sort of elevation model or a, um, um, a relief model. And it is the point in which objects can be referenced to. So you can place points on, above, or below uh, an elevation model. Um, and we offer you a world elevation service, which is globally uh, provided. It, ha it varies in resolution, or you can also use your own elevation model, so your own custom elevation model that you have. Um, the importance of using this is that you can start to place your geometry on that object or uh, relative to that object in the real world space, and then you can extrude the geometry to the height that you have defined in the attribute table. Um, kind of like setting buildings on the ground and then extruding a building to the height uh, rather than setting a building at zero, which uh, if I were in Denver, zero would be underground. Um, and finally, um, to take that 3D geometry uh, into a more concrete uh, piece of feature class, uh, you can use the layer 3D to feature class geoprocessing tool. This will take that simple 2D geometry that you have rendered in 3D uh, and, and burn that 3D representation into the into the geometry so that it persists inside of that geodatabase. So again, it is layer 3D to feature class and that is a very useful geoprocessing tool that we use often. So 3D by nature, some things that you're going to work with will just by default have the 3D capability. Um, when you're working with shape files or feature classes and you open up the attribute table, you'll notice that there's a shape column. Often it'll just be point or polygon or polyline that is recorded for each record. But if you notice that there is a polygon Z or a point Z or a polyline Z, or if you're in uh, any other place other than the US, it could be polygon Z. Um, that, would, that, is, that means that that feature class has the capability to store not only the X, Y coordinates, but also the, the Z coordinates, so um, a definition of height. Other things are multi-patches. You could have a complex model like this little car, um, and that could be brought into ArcGIS inside of our, one of our 3D scenes and modeled so you could bring in real-world cars or boats or uh, buildings as a multi-patch. Um, but a multi-patch is often represented as buildings, and you'll see a lot of our buildings that we, we uh, post on uh, ArcGIS Online. And a complex building or a very simple building could be stored as a multi-patch. And what a multi-patch is, is a series of triangulated faces and edges and nodes that all have X, Y, and Z awareness um, and is stored inside of a geo database. And that is just truly nature, by nature, a 3D object. Another 3D um, object would be a LiDAR data set. Uh, that is a dense collection of points collected from uh, an aerial survey, sometimes by a terrestrial, like a car, they'll mount a sensor on a, uh, a vehicle of some sort, and it shoots lasers at objects and uh, measures the amount of time it takes to return, and then they get a point for every pulse of that laser. And it creates a really nice, dense collection of point, and as you can as you can see, it starts to put together real world objects that humans can understand, um, kind of like a pointillism uh, piece of art. Another layer that is 3D by nature is a integrated mesh. Um, this is similar to a multi-patch, but it's something that has a much broader um, span. It is a triangulated, uh, we'll say sheep, a sheet of uh, that has been draped over the world, uh, often with real-world textures on top of it. It really, you'll start to notice these when you look at um, 
web-based uh, 3D uh, scenes uh, that you look at, uh, say the trees will start to look more melted or more general, uh, but uh, they're just a larger extent of, uh, of triangulated uh, uh, mesh, I guess we'll call it for better, lack of better term, uh, that has imagery pasted on top of it. Now, more LOD is not always more. So what do I mean by this? This is something that I like to kind of uh, discuss with a lot of my customers when I'm discussing what level of detail they want to extract or want to have in their community. Um, we describe the level of detail in a variety of ways and depending on who you're talking to and what the what the industry that you're working in, everyone will have a different definition of level of detail. But for a, for a general uh, context in uh, Cityscape, we could start with uh, LOD1 and that could be a simple polygon of footprints that have been extruded upward to the defined height of a building with no real defined shape on that shape on that roof. There are no textures and we would refer to that as an LOD1. Now that is a very simple piece of geometry. Um, you can take a step further and go to LOD2 and that would be without texture and that is starting to extract different parts of roof forms uh, like mechanical features on top of uh, buildings or the accurate or uh, the right shape of roof for a residential house so gabled or a hip roof um, and a lot of this is actually extracted from LiDAR or um, the yeah extracted from lidar um, the next level would be lod3 that has a lot more detail you're starting to find small finite um, pieces of geometry in buildings and you can just represent more a real a more realistic structure and then finally lod3 textured is the a similar shape as LOD3, but it has the realistic texture on the outside of that building. And it's not just a generic facade, it is the actual facade of, of the actual buildings that they're trying to model. Now, when I talk to customers, often I want them to ask themselves, what is the lowest level of detail needed? Because LOD3 looks great and it starts to get into the hyper-realistic scenes, but is it necessary for your for your project? Do you need to take the the cost or the money, spend like money on collecting this type of data, and are you going to get the amount of return out of it? Do you need to know exactly where every single window is in on every building in your city? And oftentimes it's it's not necessary. So we see often, most often, people are floating around LOD two and three without textures, um, and also to host this type of content, it is less. Uh, it is more efficient and less costly to host a LOD2 non-texture. So um, it's some things to weigh out when you're working or considering purchasing or building out 3D models of a cityscape. 3D WebGIS. So I I'd mentioned earlier that uh, there's a phrase I want you to keep in mind is unlimited features. So uh, up until recently, um, you could not host um, just as much data as you wanted inside of a, a web scene. Um, now we've limited, we've uh, lifted the limit. So you could have points, lines, and polygons that are hundreds of thousands and even millions of records inside of a 3D uh, scene. Um, we are utilizing um, a decluttering and an improved perspective um, operation on the 3D content. And we also support uh, symbology scaling where the further you get away it's going to scale the 3d symbology as you get further away from the camera point um, and that is all web-based GIS um, and then finally uh, 3d is fully supported through to the mobile devices so if you have built out a 3d scene inside of ArcGIS online or portal um, that scene could be consumed inside of a mobile device quite easily um, and again with unlimited records of data um finally uh smart mapping so you can utilize smart mapping for a lot of our um, 3d content for air for things like um, geo enrichment or lidar uh, 
the web scene uh, authoring platform will allow you to um, choose from the uh, menu, much like in a 2D mapping, uh, the web map. Um, other things that you can do are publish water bodies, and <clears throat> ArcGIS Online will be smart enough to understand that this is a water body, and it will apply a, a water-based texture to that. So smart mapping is supported in web uh, GIS, 3D web GIS. So on the point of special software, um, I wanted to discuss that uh, 3DGIS is supported across all of our uh, products, starting off in ArcGIS Pro, which is that um, that authoring 2D and 3D uh, platform. So it is your uh, data authoring and analytical platform. You can use 3D Analyst as an extension to further uh, your 3D GIS uh, experience. So that would be specific tools that are geared toward 3D GIS. City Engine allows you to do um, nice uh, scenario-based design work around cityscapes. Um, ArcGIS, Earth, and Runtime, and Web App Builder, and JavaScript, the JavaScript API are all apps and APIs and SDKs that support 3D. Um, and then finally, uh, all of this can be pushed through to ArcGIS Enterprise or ArcGIS Online. So those two will support your uh, 3D GIS all the way through to the uh, dissemination process. Now, if you find that you need additional help, um, Esri offers a 3D launch kit, and that is a tailor-made workshop that allows uh, a consultant to come on site and work with you and your coworkers around teaching you 3D GIS. It teaches you 3D workflows um, with hands-on work with your data in your environment. So we would be utilizing your computers to teach you how to um, extract features from LiDAR, uh, how to uh, visualize data in 3D space, and how to publish data um, all with your own data. So we would not be bringing our own content, we would be working with your data. Um, and then to further that, not just working with data inside of ArcGIS and how to publish it, but we also uh, discuss how to do analytics. So the 3D launch kit will touch base, uh, touch on working with data in ArcGIS Pro, how to do analytics like line of sight and visibility, solar suitability, how to calculate flood impact, um, all in a 3D uh, infrastructure, and then ultimately how to push that to the web and create configurable web applications. Um, if you're interested in that, please feel free to reach out to me. Again, my name is Lee Brinton, and I am the 3D technical lead here in professional services at Esri. And I can be reached at lbrinton at esri.com. Thank you.